Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party-ish <laughs> review. Today I'm taking a look at Robot Force M02 from Weizhang. This is of course another fantastic modded figure by Black Apple. He's the guy that done that amazing M01 Evasion Optimus Prime. And of course he started signing his boxes again. Now, this figure was released about two months ago, but it was recalled because the shoulder sections were breaking and a lot of the boxes had gone out without being checked and bits were missing. Now, TF Direct just has this second version in. They don't stock the first version with the faults, so everything you buy from TF Direct will be the second version with those sections fixed. Let's take a quick look at the box. We've got this really nice artwork on the front. On the side of the box, we've got a barcode we can scan and we learn that we can actually take Hound's helmet on and off. And on the back of the box, we've got a picture of him in his bot mode, his vehicle mode, and a list and photos of all of his accessories. And they have really gone to town. Everything is painted up as it should have been in the first place. Now he comes packaged in a very secure polystyrene prison and even the weapons come packaged individually. We also get a really nice set of instructions which doubles up as a poster. Uh, okay, this guy is freaking awesome. <laughs> uh, without blowing his trumpet too much, I think this is probably the best movie figure I own. They have gone to town with the detailing on Hound. They really have got it. They've done a fantastic job. I mean, just look at how good he looks. They've included ports everywhere so he can securely hold all of his weapons. He has dog tags hanging down. Now, the tactical vest is actually part of him. It's actually part of the transformation. The gun on the back has ports. This has bought everything, has a place, and he even has articulation on his feet. You wouldn't think it's even remotely based on that very basic Hasbro offering, but my gosh, this is incredible. Just look at the attention to detail they've gone to with that head sculpt, those piercing blue eyes. I mean, we even get a secondary bullet thing going on here. It's like the bullet Saigar, but uh, that looks Fantastic, you get some nice close details of those dog tags. Of course, let's not forget they've also given us the option to remove his helmet. Just got the detailing, and that's what Hound looks like without his helmet on, ladies and gentlemen. You probably saw it when I was messing around with the head, but they've added a lot of articulation as well. Hound can now look up and he can look down. We have a nice left and right motion. We even have a very quizzical tilt to the head. Now, my dog tags don't really want to peg in very well. They're meant to just tab in to the side of this neck section and they don't really want to stay there. So that's one of the problems I'm having with mine. You also notice there are a few, I'll just take these off because they're annoying. There are a few little sprue marks on the end of some of those sections as well. Uh, the odd dink here and there. But overall, he is an amazing looking figure. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Uh, the shoulders can move up like so, and we can move down. We can move all the way around. It's all a friction joint. Now, of course, there is hindrance when we have all of these weapons on here. We have a nice bend at the elbow. We have an upper bicep rotation. We have a rotation on the wrist and we have an open and closing hand so we can hold his weapons. Uh, not hold them brilliantly, but he holds them nonetheless. Even with all of this extra magic going on, there is still a waist rotation, albeit very, very tight. The legs can come this far forwards, but I can't really move them back any further than that. There's this small notch section, the inside of the crotch, and it doesn't really allow me to move the legs any further back than that. They kind of just sit there. The legs can come out to the side again, being hindered by the weaponry. 
There is a bend at the knee, a nice deep bend, and we do get this rotation on the toes, which is nice, although mine are a little bit looser than I would have liked. And the toes can come out to the side. The heel section can move up and down as well. So we can get him in a nice deep stance, which to be honest is pretty refreshing for any Michael Bay style figure to have good articulation. Weapons are pretty much the same as what we got with the original design, although they now have a fantastic paint scheme. We have like the additional movement. Uh, we have hinges, uh, we have the ability to move handles up and down. That's something we didn't get with the original toy. Now something that struck me as very odd is the decision for scaling. As you can see I have the Corbin Bow oversized hound at the back here which is designed to scale with the Waijiang M01 Evasion Optimus Prime. Now, Wai Zhang have released their M02, Robot Force, and he's designed to scale with the kind of official line, uh, more in keeping with the Takara releases or some of the uh, more recent oversized KO Transformers figures, such as the oversized Lockdown the Human Alliance figures and even to an extent the leader class Optimus Primes. Now unfortunately for the purpose of the transformation we do have to remove all of those weapons. Uh, it's a shame. Now I believe the problem with the version 1 uh, was somewhere around these sections here. I believe these were too thin and the plastic construct that they were made from just wasn't adequate to, uh, I, I guess, to continually be transformed but these seem to be okay they seem to be pretty strong and a nice build uh, to start off you want to just grab his waist section and pull this section down and we're going to rotate this entire section 180 degrees so his butthole is facing forwards rotate the thighs back again so they're facing forwards now the feet are a little bit more complex than what we got with the original, so you want to just bring the heel section down and out to the side, that gives us lots of room to play with. Now this section on the side of the leg flips down, and then these wheel sections can come down like so, and what you want to do, you want to just untab this, these two sections here are going to tab in together and they're going to actually form the wheels so that's going to tab in and this section here again it's going to flip around and those are going to tab in together like so you're going to rotate them so they are both around and there's this tab section here this leg is going to come up and rotate and it's going to extend like so and then that's just going to push and secure that section into place and then come around to the bottom section you want to bring the heel section down and just applying pressure on the base of it like so you want to have this section covering the back end of the wheels when bending the waist down just make sure it's fully clear of this back section and goes all the way into this position and make sure that the legs are facing upwards. Untab the body armor section from the top. It's just a hook that goes over this lip. Fully extend this section outwards. Untab and fold these two hinges inwards. Fold these hinges up and over like so, then fold them together and then fold this section up. There's a hook on either side, tabbing in on either side of this section. Then making full use of these hinges, make sure it runs along the underside of the torso. Remove his ankle pistols. And with this section just squished together, we can peg the feet in together using this peg here and the legs are going to peg together using this peg and armor section is basically wedged between there to tab these in 
and tab that in. Let's come around to the arms. Uh, the arms are pretty straightforward. You want to straighten them up. You want to untab it from this section underneath. Just pull it away from the tab in the chest. And as we bring this section down, the arm is going to rotate like so. And then you're going to rotate the forearm. And there's a tab here and there's a hole just on the inside of the forearm. That's going to line up and tab together like so. Uh, we can then bring these arms back over the torso. They're gonna to come across like so, and they're gonna slide around to the back like this. Do that with both sides. Come around to this back section, separate these wheels, grab this shoulder section, and the shoulder section is on this hinge here. You wanna bring it up. It rotates around, and this small section here can rotate around and as we rotate that around that's going to flip and there's a tab here and a tab here that's going to tab together. We can then grab these two sections and they are going to in turn tab together like so. Untab the chest section just below Hound's beard and as it folds outwards and downwards like so this section then folds in and as it folds downwards you see this tucks these hinges up and under, and then you just tidy up those tabs there, and then bring these up and around the hands, and get everything to angle correctly. You need to make sure that the thighs are pushed backwards. So this section is facing up at an angle. That now allows us to rotate the section around, and as you can see there's a tab here, tab here, that's gonna bring up, and that will now line up and push in along the side here, filling in that gap and then with a big firm click that clicks into place and then we can then bring this rear hind section up and that's going to rock on this axis and as it comes up there's these tabs at this rear section here they're going to come up and tabs in and just slides under. And the problem I've had with this, pushing these extra tabs into this back section that doesn't really want to tab in as well as it should, you push on here and this pushes this back section and dislodges it slightly. Uh, it's something to do with the engineering. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work as it should. Um, let's come around to the head section. The head section rotates down. Keep rotating this section all the way around until we get the front bumper section and then just push the head section up and under and into place. And here we have him all transformed up into his heavy artillery mode. He's got all of his guns tabbed in and I mean absolutely all of his guns. If we flip him over the guns that we removed from his shins to allow space for the tactical vest now tab in under the front of the cab and the knives now tab in to the shins. Good old Black Apple literally thought of everything. We've got high levels of detailing, you've got some nice windows, you've got some nice wing mirrors there. Very nice camo paint scheme throughout. You've got the top section there, which is only decorative, but it's an armored personnel carrier. It's what would be. Now my guns don't tab in as firmly as that I'd like. If I give it a good shake, this will come untabbed. And I can't get all of these sections to line up. Uh, not all of the wheels roll in unison. Uh, there's a couple of slight imperfections, I guess, uh, with some clearance issues. Uh, but that being said, it looks incredible. It's definitely the very best representation of Movie Hound, and I love it. It's by far my favourite movie figure I own. I mean, that's including the M01. Uh, taking a look at his vehicle scale, um, he's probably too small uh, vehicle-wise to scale with your Human Alliance kind of leader class figures. Now, I don't have any movie deluxes. I, I never really took to them. But, uh, for example, here we have the Ironhide Combiner Wars Deluxe. And that's actually a very good scale 
in my opinion. The vehicle mode definitely does scale with the deluxe size figures. Uh, I'm never going to have him in this mode. It's a fun mode and it's a very highly detailed mode. I love the paint applications, I love the dirt on the wheels, etc. But his bot mode is what persuaded me to get him. It's a fantastic bot mode and I think they've done a very good job. Now, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Uh, I think Black Apple is definitely an asset to the Wei Zhang team. He is an outstanding designer. They've taken a very bland, a very so-so mold, and they've re-engineered it and made it a figure, made it something that it should have already been. This, in my opinion, is pretty much up there with the M01 and the MPP10. It is a masterpiece in its own right. Now it isn't without its flaws. Like I said, some of these bits don't tab in as well as they should. And the transformation probably isn't as smooth as it should be. We don't have anywhere for the dog tags. We don't have anywhere for the grenade in this mode. But faults aside, it's a very nice piece. And that bot mode is outstanding. Thanks for watching everybody. Until next time, from myself, an M02 Armour Inspector, aka Hound, thanks for watching, a goodbye.